Good morning, church. Okay. First, as I was reminded to keep the time, so I set my time. Um, I think very importantly, I would say um, the readings this morning speaks to us as a church more than anything else. Can I check? Um, I was told to speak, you know, loudly. Can you hear me? Okay. <laughs> right. Um, so, we read from the book of John, from Second Samuel, and from Ephesians. I'm going to home in a lot on Ephesians. And the topic for, well, how I feel God was speaking to me when I looked at this was firstly through Second Samuel, the story of Absalom and his father David. David, you know, is described as a friend of God. Now, if we look at the story of David, he was not the most righteous human being we can think of, is he? So he was a sinner. He knew what being a sinner was all about. And he knew what being forgiven was all about. Then comes his son Absalom. Absalom if I look at it from a cultural perspective where I'm coming from, was a very disobedient and arrogant little young man who looked at his father and think, you know what? You think you can actually tell all of us what to do? I want to take over your throne. So I want to actually kick you off your throne. So he started a war with his father. I want to kind of Look at that. Because what the Lord spoke to me about is the love of the Father for the Son. So no matter how bad and how disobedient Absalom was, his father still loved him enough to tell his, you know, his army going out after him to please be gentle with the young man for my sake. So I pray, Father, open our hearts to hear from you. You have a word for us today. Lord, help us to learn from you. In Jesus' name. So, the I want to pick it one by one. I don't want to kind of like leave any of the readings out. Um, <laughs> I was saying to Lee before that when I want to speak, I want to pick from each of the scriptures and kind of miss it together because they all have something to say to us. And he laughed at it. He said, well, you like cooking, so you are doing it as a cooking program. I said, okay. Maybe that is, that's what it is. I love my food. Yeah. Last week, we looked at the supremacy of Jesus. So we started the reading in John with one of the I am statements. I am the bread of life. Christ says he is the bread of life. So please hold that aside. We're going to miss it into the cooking later. A father's love. You see, love, when I look at it, is an action word. You don't just say, oh, I love you, and do nothing. If we look at the example we have, who is Christ? See, God loves us so much that he gave his son 
And his son did not look at it to say, yeah, you're the one that loved them, so do what you want to do. Don't put me in the mix. He came into this world and he suffered. He was made, you know, to look like nobody. His death on the cross is more than a shameful thing at his time. But he took it for our sake. And that's his love for us. He gave because he loved us. His father gave because he loved us. Now, he is our example, Christ, the ultimate example that we have been given as human beings to live. We are Christians. The word Christian is an action word. You can't be a Christian and not serve with your life. Christ served with his life. We are called to serve with our lives. And how are we doing that? How are we serving? Now, I kind of prepared my own thing, but sitting down there right now, the Lord was saying to me, just pick from what they have read, read and expatiate on that. So, I want us to walk through Ephesians and see what God is saying to us there. But I will still go back to the things I prepared to give you exactly what the Lord was speaking to me about there as well, if we have the time. So reading through Ephesians, it warns us about lying. In what ways? So I want to don't don't take it as a personal thing, but take it as a personal thing. But the Lord is saying, you know, just pick through it and give it to my people as I have given it. I don't want to wash it down or turn it into something else. So I want you to ask yourself, in what ways have I lied? The Bible is saying we should stop lying. Sometimes we say, well, it's only a white lie. Uh, it didn't say white lie is accepted. It said we should stop lying. It says we should speak to our neighbor. And one thing I picked from that is saying that we should live in unity, speak to our neighbor in a, in a nice way. It says speak the truth in love. So when somebody have done something wrong against me and I need to speak to the person, I should speak to them in love. I should not go, why are you doing that to me? I can do that. I'm very good at that. But the Bible is saying I should speak it in love. So how will I speak it in love? So first, this is me. I have to learn to take a deep breath go to the person later not when it was just happening because I know if I do I will be screaming like a mad woman so I stop myself and then go back to it later does that mean I'm a coward? no but will I get the best results for Christ and will it be a defined that person because he also said to us that we should, you know, uh, no corrupt words should come from our mouths. But just the words that will edify that person. So will the words that I'm going to speak at that time when I'm angry, going to, you know, build that person up? And is that going to enrich the kingdom of God? Is that going to help that person proceed and have eternal life because our lives as we live it is a picture it's a bible for some people that don't even pick the bible at all so when we stand and you know square up to the other person and quarrel and curse them and curse yeah I can, I can talk I used to have an uncle he would pick the chair up and sit down in front of the house and say to the wife you think you can talk more than me okay let's talk yeah, 
he wasn't actually building a good example for those that were around him. When you don't build a good example, something goes with it. If you remember the story of David, he did something wrong. And the prophet Nathan said something to him. So no matter what Absalom does, it's in reaction to something his father had done before. When you build a good example, it goes from generation to generation. So my uncle that did that, what happened to his son? He continued the same way. And he ended up badly, dead before his time. Absalom challenged his father. And his father begged his generals to be kind to him. Now, you know, Ephesians says that we should be, you know, aware of anger. That we should not give place to the devil. Because when we let our anger take control of us, we have given a foothold to the devil in our lives. Absalom, you know, running away and the generals pursuing him, he got caught. Because the place where you know, they were fighting was a wilderness and there was stuff all over the place. So he got caught. And these men, they all heard it because the Bible was you know, very clear on that. Everyone that was there had the commandments. Be gentle with my son. Treat him kindly for my sake. The Lord is saying to us, be gentle to one another. Be gentle to one another. At this time of the vacancy period, let's be gentle with one another, lifting each other up in prayers, helping each other to grow, being mindful of the things that God said we should not do. Our lives, our lives is the evangelic tool that God has given to us. As we live, that's how we will preach to others. If you remember the story of the woman by the well, when Christ told her some things about herself, she went away and said, I've seen a man that told me everything about myself. So he went and told the others, and they came and they believed. So I know for myself, God speaks to me in different ways, and he speaks to me through the things I have been through in life. I think I said before that some things that happened in my former church made me say, okay, look, I need to go back let me retract my steps and go back to where I was coming from. Because when you miss your way, you know to, you know, retrace your, you know, your steps and go back. And one of the things that kind of triggered that move is the fact that I was thinking, seeing that the Bible is clear. Why do we have to Try and mix it to our own advantage. Yeah, it's easy to read the Bible and read it out of context. If the Bible says, love your neighbor as yourself, if I love my neighbor as myself, and they sin, my duty as a believer is to help them come up. Tell them that they have sinned, yes, but help them come up. It's not my duty to say, yeah, you sinned. You are suspended. That was done to me. So I'm speaking from my own experience. But in my view, it wasn't that I sinned. It was a human interpretation that I sinned. Because if I feel the Bible spoke to me, the Holy Spirit led me to do something, and I said to you as my leader, this is what the Lord has said to me. 
and I did it. And you say, oh yeah, fine. And then later you flog me on it. I think that's wrong. Because the Bible did not say that to me. He said you should correct me in the right manner, in love, and leave it to him. He says that we shouldn't judge. Yes. But that we are able to judge each other and help each other stand. I'll give you a little bit of the story. The law on tithing, because something we read there said that we should give to help each other, right? And the Bible says we should give. You give with a joyful heart. Nobody should, you know, guilt trip you into giving. Yes, we have to give to make God's work go full. God, in his love for us, provides that. So I give. Nobody forces me. Whether I have or not, I give because God said to do so. So I was tithing. And my mom's house was leaking. And I had to do it. And I said, okay, because, Pastor, this is what I have seen. I didn't have peace with it. And I felt God says to go and do that before you do anything else. So I said, okay, I'm going to take some time off. I need to do this because this is what the Holy Spirit is leading me to do. So I did. And I think maybe it was the, the money was missed, so I was punished for it. I was told, you cannot serve. You cannot lead all the groups you are leading because you have not done things the way we want, them, want it to be done. So that was when I talk about I was punished. I was told suspended that was the reason. It's not because I sinned as in the general sense of sinning that we, we will think about. But for me, it would have been done in a better way. So I felt that wasn't right. And the more we go on, the more I feel that is wrong. If the Holy Spirit have led you to do something, come and speak to it in love. Speak to the person in love. To edify, that's what we are told to do today. To edify that person. To help that person to climb the next step. To get to the kingdom. See, the goal of this work we are in, the reason why God called us together as a family, as a body, was because he loves us and he wants a relationship with us. That when we die, we will now partake as well in his kingdom. He is the bread of life that if you eat it, you will never die. It doesn't mean that you will not die. Earthly death. It doesn't mean that you will not go through trials. As I was sitting there just now, this message, let me give it to whoever it was for. It says, you know, somebody is there kind of Doubting who God is in their lives. See, Christ suffered. So the Lord said, my son suffered here on earth. I never left him. So do not doubt me or my love for you because you are going through what you are going through. I am with you. At this point in our lives, in church, in the, you know, the life of um, Christ Church, we are going through what we are going through. And God is here with us. It's not a time for you to say, mm, I've had enough of these people. I can do better on my own. That's not the right time. We need to take example from Christ and the first Christians. What did they do after Christ was crucified? 
they came together in the upper room and they prayed until the Holy Spirit was given to them. Now, this is the time for us to stick together. If you don't see me in church, please be free to call Betty and say, hey, woman, where were you today? Maybe I feel, you know, I don't want to come out today, but then if you tell me off for not being here today, I will be here next week. If you don't see me, you don't know if I'm sick. You don't know if I'm dead at home. If you phone and I don't pick, knock on my door. My door is always open. It doesn't bother me if my floor is dirty. Love me the way you see me. Just like Christ loves us the way he found us. He loved us before we became Christians. He loved us enough to give his life for us. He loved us enough to pick us up even when we were still dirty. So let's love each other in that same love. God's love is just so great. I look at it, you know, if I talk about God's love in my life, it's amazing. When we were praying this morning, Helen said something, said uh, that I should speak from the point of God's love in my life. And if I do that, we won't live here today. <laughs> because as I always say, my life <laughs> as a bunch of testimonies that if I continue talking about them, it's more than a message itself. And I will not actually finish. God has been good to me. He's been good in my life. You know, so I, I would just encourage you. You know, we read um, Ephesians, which I'm going to try and wrap up on that quickly. We read on Ephesians and um, we see the story that we read. Well, Ephesians is a bunch of writings that Paul wrote when he was in prison to encourage the Christians in Ephesus. And I was going to actually read for us as well Corinth, some stuff from Corinth because they're actually encouraging the Christians as well and telling them the right way to live. Because those in Corinth, they actually just missed it all together and they were just doing, you know, different things. So when Paul heard, he was writing these letters to them, to, to the Corinthians, to tell them off for what they're doing wrong, to tell them how to live their lives. And for the Ephesians, you know, they were in, uh, at a time that Christians were being persecuted and he just was encouraging them to stand firm to serve in unity and love in the midst of their persecution so that so what is it saying to us as Christ church that we should always remember to call us um, we should always remember that we all are called by grace Ephesians 2 verse 8 says for by grace you have been called. If you have been called by grace, in the same manner, treat each other with that same grace. Thank you. Thank you, Betty. It'd be good, wouldn't it, just to have a moment of quiet to reflect on uh, what God has said to us through Betty.